All right, welcome to Focus Agordium, where we generate, evaluate, and execute on startup ideas. Today, we're taking a look at doctor visits, and specifically that they're really inefficient in terms of time traveling there and, uh, and waiting time once you get to the office. So uh, this was pointed out to me in Scott Galloway's uh, article, Unlocks. And among other things, he, he talked about this, and I, I think this one's really interesting for a variety of reasons. Like, I think if you think about um, doctor's visits, like, especially thinking about, so I, I'm going to start actually throwing down some levers here. I think you have one part of the problem is, is doctor pay, right? So doctor pay is so high and their time is so valuable. Yeah. And that's why, you know, you want to have the, the least valuable person waiting, right? And that would be you because the, the doctor is likely more valuable than you. Yeah. And, and again, travel time, it's your doctor or your time is cheaper than the doctor's pay. Um, you know, another way that doctors are inefficient is that doctors hours are often your hours. Oh yeah. So then yeah. It, it leads to you needing to take off time from work. And I, I think that'd be an interesting, you know, way to, to sort of crack this nut up maybe a little bit. Yeah. Um, well, I think one thing I'm thinking about here actually is why we sleep. Though with relation to hours, you know, you, you talk about nurses and um, administration yeah. of drugs and how, how like a lack of sleep is impacting yeah. healthcare outcomes. Um, um, and, you know, that's kind of a wider problem even here is that like, in part, doctor's visits are inefficient because doctors are overworked and tired. Like, yeah, I mean, that's part of the problem well, straight up. And then also we, we tend to, you know, need doctors when really we don't need the doctor. Yes. We yeah. need, you know, just a, a nurse, you know, I think this is most seen at, at the dentist where the, the dental hygienist will clean your teeth and then the dentist comes in and at least for me, he, he like seems to count all my teeth and then that's it. Yeah. And it's like, I wonder, could it be cheaper for everyone involved, you know, just to say, you know, I don't need the dentist. Yeah. You know, I just need a clean. So like, um, doctor's appointments without doctor's presence. Yeah. 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 What if the doc, what if a doctor's appointment just meant, you know, the doctor is available if anything needs, you know, special attention. Yes. I, well, and I think uh, like, I think that makes a lot of sense. I think a, in addition, a, a similar kind of vein is, oh, I'm going to forget it. Oh, um, testing, moving testing up the chain. Think about what COVID has done. And, and, and I think this is something we should continue to do is I didn't have to get a doctor's note to go get a COVID test. I didn't have to go to the doctor and say, hey, I'm feeling, like think about strep throat. Yeah. How much time is wasted on strep throat, you know, like expanding mm -hmm. access to at-home at tests. Yeah. And, you know, yes, you're gonna get some false positives, but it cannot be as much yeah. wasted time as going to the doctors. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. you know, rational beings should want, you know, as much information as possible, you know, so then expanding testing should, you know, only improve our, our understanding of what's going on, whether that's, yeah, you know, the spread of a disease, you know, be it flu or strep throat or whatnot, um, or, or as an individual, you know, if yeah, if you know that you have the flu, then you can make better informed decisions um, about how to proceed, and and you know hopefully that will that would lead to to less doctor's appointments, which would lead to you know less um, you know stress and pressure on doctors, which yeah I think would make them more efficient. You don't need to wait for the doctor because 
the doctor, you know, hopefully is just dealing with uh, issues as they arise. Yeah, I think one thing to note here is to clear up um, who owns this data and what is covered here. Um, in, let's see, in surveillance capitalism, she, the author talks about specifically for like what's ancestry like that i i believe like your your genetic information is is hipaa data but but that gets shared with your insurance company that gets shared with all kinds of folks and you know i you know i think that should be considered private privilege information and i think you have to clear up if you take an at home test for something who owns that data yeah um yeah. can can a third party sell that if they provide it yeah yeah or, or can that data be anonymized and you know provided to to the you know appropriate people yeah you know, um, public health departments i think it'd be good for them to have you know especially if it's anonymized data yeah i think another layer to this is is um preventative care like increasing preventative care you know, because there's a lot of ways this is wasted. And one way is that someone comes in with a condition much further along than it needs to be, and they require an operation. You know, another, yeah, I mean, honestly, that's probably a big part of it is just we're dealing with things so late in the game. Yeah. 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 I had a thought, but it's, you know, only tangentially related. I don't have much more on that if you want to throw yeah, that there. Well, um, in The Premonition by Michael Lewis, he talks um, about uh, a public health, uh, you know, county public health uh, doctor. And she was, you know, tracking this. This person had this mutated strain of tuberculosis. And he, you know, was rightfully the most dangerous person in California at that time. Jeez. Because he had a a, um, a form of tuberculosis that was uh, resistant to drugs, and oh um, there was something else that made it, it in additionally uh, deadly. And there was just a lack of understanding on how to proceed with that. You know, where like the police were out looking for him but they didn't get the gravity of the situation yeah where he he ended up getting like found they found him and they traced you know several other tuberculosis infections from him um yeah but then he he ended up getting away and it's like well you know at no fault of his own except his fleeing yeah. um but he happened to be an immigrant so oh. you've got that additional thing. Yeah. He, he was, yeah, legitimately the most dangerous person in the state. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think that's that's another part of this. It's like, it's difficult to talk about data, uh, to talk about for doctors to facilitate things across boundaries. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, in that, she, she was in California. She, if she decided it was a public health emergency, she became the most powerful person in the state. Only the governor could overturn her if they declared a state of emergency. The doctor? Yes, the oh. county public health doctor. Wow, that's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, I think that there's a real 80-20 that I think would be good to just apply to like rule for doctors like this they're so valuable let's start thinking about them as like very high value like it, it reminds me of uh, a closer in baseball right like you don't you don't throw your closer in for eight innings you, you, you put them in in the last two innings when like yeah. you really need it and i think doctors could be i mean that would be excellent i think is to have them play that role you know, similar to, um, you know, what I said, well, the, the light version of a doctor's appointment, um, 
I think it was in the Undoing Project, again by Michael Lewis. He talked about um, a hospital in Ontario um, where basically they they had these people wanting to get into med school and they needed their volunteer hours at a hospital, but they, you know, for one treatment group, they, they had those volunteers basically be 24 seven concierge service for the homeless population. And that ended up really improving the, the situation, you know, the, the treatment and the outcomes and the costs to treat these homeless people. That's really, yeah. Because, yeah, and again, you can escalate up, right? If something is really serious, if yeah. someone has appendicitis, yeah, yeah. you get them to an actual freaking doctor. But if, if they're dealing with dehydration yeah. or um, yeah. or cold or the flu, like there's really clear things to, yeah. to do. I, I feel like there's a lot of liability here. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like I, I think, and this is part of why doctors are so expensive because yeah. the liability insurance they have to have. And, you know, that's a, that's a great thing, but at the same time, it comes with a real cost that I, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I think, is it Taleb who, who mentioned the possibility of signing over your, your right to sue for malpractice. Oh, yeah, I think it might have been. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, that'd just be one way to, to drive down liability insurance. Well, I think also another yeah. thing here is, is caseload slash just number of doctors. Yeah. In the US, like there, there's not enough, right? Um, doctors are overworked. And, and I, so I think an interesting solution would be to like increase med school enrollment and graduation. So like what would happen if doctors had time to really focus on each patient? What wouldn't slip through the cracks anymore, you know? Yeah. Could could preventative care start to take place? Yeah. I don't know. Um all right. I I'm think I am thinking through here, just looking at stuff trying to get my ratings. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm ready. I am ready as well. Motivation, I give a zero. I, I agree, as much as I, I find this really interesting and useful, I don't have much connection to the Doctors are a, a different beast and I don't wanna deal with them. Um, speed to failure. Uh, I think that's pretty rough. I give a zero. I, I agree. I mean, unless one of the, I, I mean, virtual visits. Yeah, sort but of those are already kind of doing. Yeah. And that was a huge lift because you really got to be thoughtful. Yeah. I mean, Amazon is making it easier to be clear. You can store, Amazon has HIPAA servers that are HIPAA certified. So you can okay. store data on there. So it's, it's a little bit more plug and play, but. Huh. Um, I give I think an impact too. of one. I I think there's lots of issues with the healthcare in general, and I'm not sure that you know doctors' visits being inefficient, you know, is is very high on that list. I would give it a two because I think it's a little bit of an eighty twenty thing. Like I think if you can flip doctors' visits, you can flip a lot of other stuff. Yeah. Um. Is it not or not now? I think so. Yep. Because we don't really have a studio at this point. Well, and motivation is zero. Oh, I forgot that's always not or not now. Um, all right, folks. Thank you so much for joining us and, and take care.